excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Mally Moore. I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. And holy fucking shit, I'm gonna go off today. Yeah, I'm gonna let you just unravel today because I have a feeling... I'm gonna try to talk about the movie, but I'm just gonna talk about this Mm -hmm. whole thing. Oh, well, I look forward to it. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is, as Mally mentioned, the Silver Linings Playlist. If you are new to the show, thank you for tuning in for the first time. And if you're a returning guest, you already know what's up. Uh, the goal of our show is we watch movies like the film we're watching today. And typically, these movies don't end in a way that is very uplifting. Uh, it's very pessimistic, usually uh, depressing endings we cover a lot. Sometimes we cover really what-the-fuck confusing, baffling endings. Uh, today, we're diving back into the true crime world. As we talk about the film oh, yeah. Devil's Knot. Uh, as you can tell, Mally's oh, yeah. a little more excited than usual because this is his pick. Uh, yes. So, Mally, I'm sure you're ready to go. Why don't you just tell me what your relationship is with this movie? Okay. So, first off, like, I've, did you know about this case before this movie? So, I knew about the case. Never okay. had heard of the movie. Right. I wasn't very aware of the movie up until, like, honestly, like, a year ago. Mm Because, okay, so I've always been, everyone, like, most people that know me know I'm really big into true crime, serial killers. I love cults. Yep. And I remember, like, I've read about this case. Let's do a bunch of stuff. But um, about a year and a half ago, I worked on this movie. Here in Atlanta, not this movie, but I worked on a movie that was about, like, you know, this wrongly convicted guy on death row. And that got me really into, like, the Innocence Project and, you know, Equal Justice Initiative, all that stuff. And I started looking more and more into all these cases. And, of course, the West Memphis Three is, like, the fucking poster child for that kind of, like, wrong wrongfully convicted people and all that shit. And I was just really digging into this case. And I read Devil's Not the book. Um, I'm actually re I was actually the reason we're doing this movie because I'm rereading the book right now. It was like, oh, I'm going to watch that movie again. I, I'm going to start off right here. This movie is not great. Nope. It is not a very good movie. It's mm-hmm. actually a pretty <clears throat> bad movie. Yeah. Not just because of the fact that it's a bad movie, but the, they butchered the book and the details of the case it's rough anyway um and i was like at work i worked at this rental house at the time and i was just ranting about this case because i do that and my boss was actually like oh you know i worked on that movie right i was like (laughs) what movie he's like no he's like devil's not like they made a movie out of that book and i was like they fucking what um yeah he was actually a uh He's he was an underwater DP like uh, special camera operator. So like all the stuff around like the water and like he did, he was like the DP for all the water stuff like second unit and he was like C camera on a lot of stuff. So he actually like he told me a bit about the movie and I was like oh, fuck I'm gonna go watch that. And he's like yeah because you haven't shut up about this case for a week so you should probably watch this movie. <laughs> the movie's not good. Um, nope. Um, I'm just like I thing sucks. Yes, it was. It's a bad movie, but I really just this is an excuse for me to talk about the West Memphis Three, and I will take every fucking opportunity I can because not th- this we're this this episode of the podcast we're really broadening our horizons because we're not just gonna find the silver lining in this movie. We're gonna find the silver lining in this whole fucking case, Dustin. <laughs> oh Are shit, you ready? we're gonna crack it open. <laughs> I, no, I mean, it's kind of it's it, it's kind of been cracked open since like 2012. Um, some would say even longer before that, but it's just, oh my God, I, I felt so bad because a friend was watching this with me yesterday and I just felt so bad for her afterwards. Cause I was just screaming about <laughs> like how this, like that prosecutor's a fucking idiot. That fucking, that judge was an absolute piece of shit. And oh my God. And I'm going to do that on this episode. All right. 
Um, I guess we'll wait until the end to get into the actual, like, what you think of the trial itself. Oh, yeah. Um, so, Dustin, was this your first time seeing the film? <laughs> first time seeing it? First time even fucking hearing about it? Um, When you mentioned it to me, I had no idea what the fuck you were talking about and had to yeah. look it up. Like, for a, for <clears> this, like... For a movie no one's heard of, like, it's got some names in the cast. As soon as I saw Colin Firth and Reese Witherspoon, I was like, how the fuck have I never even heard of this movie? It um, slipped under the radar, which is probably good, because it's bad. Yeah, I don't know, like I mentioned earlier, I don't know a whole, like, a whole lot about this case. Um, for fans of the show, you know I'm not really that big into true crime, uh, unless we're talking Tiger King, because that shit was fucking insane. Oh my um, god. But I, I I put this movie on uh, as I was like getting ready to go to bed. I was like, you know, I'll I'll snuggle up in the bed. I got my fiance with me. We'll both watch it. How uh, quickly did you fall asleep? She fell asleep super quick. Um, I I stuck it out, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's not a very good movie. Um, uh, just as a movie, it's not very good. It's um, really not like. <sighs> Yeah, and I mean, it's crazy well, to me because like this, sto- like the story of this case would make like oh my, like someone could write the mo- like such a fucking compelling crime, like true crime movie out of this, and they just butchered. Like it's it, I don't know. Like the movie's all over the place. Yeah, it it never really hits its stride. And I'm sorry, um, making Colin Firth's character because that uh, he was like an actual like they had. It wasn't just one dude. They had God knows how many actual investigators like researching all this stuff for yeah. them. Um, making him the main character. Weird choice. Yeah. Weird choice, in my opinion. I don't really like any of the characters in this movie. Um, no. Even Reese Witherspoon's character. She doesn't get a whole lot to do um, after the first act anyway. And yeah, Colin Firth is sleepwalking through this movie oh my god asleep but you know what let's get into the the nitty-gritty of it the details before we actually dive too deep into the film shall we the year is 2013 as we mentioned the title of the film is devil's knot i thought Um, it was 2014 2013 2014 it could have just been like um like when it hit the festival circuit and then the fish release in 2014 maybe that makes um the director is Adam Iguion? Is that how you pronounce that? I have no idea. Okay. Um, starring Colin Firth, Reese Witherspoon. I'm not going to be able to pronounce his name. I apologize. Maria and Enos. Dane DeHaan, Stephen Moyer, Kevin Durand, uh, Colette Wolf, Elias Kotias, Bruce Greenwood, Amy Ryan, Alessandro Nivola, and Martin Henderson. Had a budget of $15 million, only managed to gross $2 million worldwide. Currently sitting at a 24% on Rotten Tomatoes. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, it's 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 just not a good movie. Um, I will say Elias Kotick, however yep. you pronounce his name, mm-hmm. he plays maybe just the biggest absolute piece of shit to ever walk this earth. That guy, in, oh my god, oh Who my god, that guy, Jerry Driver, the a cult expert. Oh, the guy that kind of look. I always get him and um, the guy from Law and Order mixed up because they kind of Elliot, favor one another. Or, yeah, uh, the guy that plays Elliot Stabler. Um, yeah, Chris. Isn't it like Christopher, Christopher Maloney? Maloney or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I always get um, those two mixed. Both up. Both fantastic actors, but oh yeah. my god, dude, he's this guy's really good in other stuff. But yeah, dude, wait. I'm gonna tell you some shit about these guys in real life. That's just gonna fucking make your skin crawl. Well, uh, let's talk about it after we discuss the trailer, shall we? For sure. I've actually never seen this trailer. This is this is the first time I'm seeing this. It's not good. Oh, I imagine not. Where's the boy? He went out I mean, I guess the trailer's Michael, fine, but... But I told him he better be home by 4.30. I don't see the boy nowhere. Anybody out there looking for my We boy? are doing everything we can. My sure. son is eight years old. We have three boys missing from Holiday Garden. Stevie! It's a very delicate situation. Can you hear me? <clears throat> I'm in the woods by that little creek they call Devil's Den. 
I found something. Damien Eccles, Jason Baldwin, and Jesse Miss Kelly will be charged in the murders of the three boys we found last month in the Robin Hood Woods. Part of our investigation. We we'll need hair samples from the two of you. Take it. Just take it. Just take all of it. This crime is unthinkable. What if they did it? And what if they didn't? Some residents suspect a satanic cult is responsible. Did they say Academy Award nominated director? It did. I no, was just afraid. thinking, what the? My name's Ron Lax. I'm an investigator. Academy did you kill any think. of those three boys? No. Those cops are scary. They will do anything to get people to say what they want to hear. This right. music is I'm not acting all, Terry. Are you? What the hell are you talking about? Are these boys that you're helping? The police seem so certain. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I am. Religion gives people who want to do evil the justification for what they do. But did you ever find any evidence to link these murders to Damien? You don't talk to her. I ask again, what is this I music? I have a right to hear what he says. I don't, You're supposed I don't to be know. a believing mother. Start behaving like one. You understand why I have to help them? The police, the judge, everybody. This is all just some sort of game to them. Do you think they try to push us for an Oscar? I mean, with all these families nominees and winners, I mean... They probably went in thinking they had an Oscar movie. And again, dude, this could... In the right hands, this story could make a fucking Academy Award winning movie. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. Um, but that, I mean, that, that, that trailer's fine, I mean, I guess. Holy yeah. shit, Scott Derrickson co-wrote this screenplay? You know what, uh... I was going to wait until next week to mention that, really, because there is an interesting time. I guess to go ahead and give you a pre-clue for next week's episode, uh, there is a connection between him and the film we're doing next week. It's Cool. Yeah. It, kind of uh, six degrees of separation, but really only like two degrees. Um, yeah. So what did this dude direct that was fucking nominated for a fucking Academy Award? Uh, best Director and Best Writing. For the Sweet Hereafter from 1997. Um, what the fuck is the Sweet Hereafter? I don't even know what that is. I don't know either. Ian Holm. Um, I don't really recognize too many people in it. I don't know. Okay. But, sure. Yeah. Um, how do you want to do this? Because I've got a few notes, and I know you've probably got an essay. So, yeah, guys, guys, I took notes during this movie. Holy shit. It's mainly just so I, because I, when I go on rants, I tend to bounce all over the place. This is me kind of laying it out for myself, so I remember what I want to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. I want to talk about the opening shot of this movie. That fucking camera move through the woods. Mm -hmm. That looks like the opening of a fucking student film. <laughs> yeah. It's really bad, and that title font is... It's nothing special. It's bad. It literally... I could probably pull up links from the film school Dustin and I both went to of student films with that exact same shot. <laughs> yeah, probably. It's bad. And Can... dude, that little the little kid's narration mm -hmm. at the beginning is really bad too. <laughs> Can I jump back <laughs> real quick even earlier than that um, to the production cards? Because I noticed this is... Um, I don't know if they've done this in other movies, or and maybe I just didn't see it before, but th there's a production card for TWC Presents. The Weinstein Company. I know, but I'm like, you, did they not want to say the Weinstein Company? I don't think I've ever seen it just say TWC. First of all, the hubris of that. Um, but uh, second of all... I think, no, they did. I think that was they that was kind of regular for them there for a while, I think. It, it very well could have been, but I just remember seeing that being like, mm, that title card hits a little differently now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, the opening's terrible. You mentioned the kid's narration. The kid's ADR is terrible. Um, oh, absolutely. It's... There's a shot early on uh, where they're in the house, and it's just on Reese Witherspoon, and it's just the kid off screen. But the ADR is so fucking horrendous. I mean, it's a it's a kid doing ADR. You can't really expect gold. But the director should have. I mean, why why not just do a wild line and pick that up on the day? You know, or 
I don't know. ADR is tricky, Who especially knows? in like... No, yeah, AD, yeah, ADR is tricky to get right, that's for sure. Speaking of which, sound, as, uh, sound design is tricky too. Did you notice this eagle sound effect that they use throughout this movie constantly? <laughs> Dude... <laughs> Dude, it is like it. I, it's. Pr- I think they do that in every single scene. They do it. I'm not exaggerating. Three times in less than 45 seconds. In fact, no shit. Yeah, just just listen. Okay, it's three times here. You'll hear it right when it starts. There's okay. one in the middle and right at the end. There's one. <laughs> one. <laughs> so this is kind of near the beginning of this the movie when they're finding the kids. In the water, there's like all the officers out in the river, like searching. But so that was one, <clears throat> and the next one's coming up right here when the officers digging in the water. Two. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice this. It's less than thirty six. Here's the other one. It's kind of muffled, but listen right here. Yep, three. Oh my god. <laughs> I it's, noticed I noticed it a oh. few times, but I did not notice it that much. Holy shit! It's so That's much. Bad. You know the 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 guy that made that sound effect was just like bam, 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 value, value, value. Get more oh my money. God, his residuals <laughs> were coming in that month. Uh, I I just um, I think I woke Priscilla up because she was falling asleep right when I noticed. Slapping. I was like, this fucking eagle sound effect. <laughs> um, okay, before we get um, before we get too deep in, I want to set up. Not only the movie, but the case itself. Okay. So, anyone that's not familiar with this, with the with Devil's Knot or the case of the West Memphis Three, mm-hmm. you gonna do a brief well, rundown or just real quick? Okay. Just to just to set it up before we talk more about the movie. Okay. Um, in case no one watched the fucking movie or if they just don't know about this case, anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um. So in what was it May 1993 in West Memphis, Arkansas. Which is six miles west of Memphis, Tennessee. Ha ha. Hmm. Um, very poor city, very small town. Um, the whole like the, one of the poorest counties in the whole fucking country at the time. Um, three little boys: Christopher Byers, Michael Moore, and Stephen Branch. Were they disappeared, and the next day they were found dead in this river or mm-hmm. in this creek i wouldn't call it a river um and there were multiple multiple suspects um or at least people that should have been suspects that i'm gonna get into don't worry and mm-hmm. they touch on it in the movie mm-hmm. but not enough in my opinion yeah um but okay that's a whole other thing um, because to be honest, the amount of, the amount that the movie touches on it is about how much the fucking police investigation focused on the other suspects. Yeah. Um, I was so going to mention that later. About a month afterwards, literally, I think it might've been a month to the day that the little boys were found. These three teenagers, Damien Eccles, <laughs> Jesse Miss Kelly, and Jason Baldwin were arrested for the murder. Tried. Damien Eccles was... Is this? I'm just. I'm just breaking down the case. Damien yeah. Eccles was sentenced to death row. Mm-hmm. The other two were sentenced to, li- sentenced to life in prison. Mm-hmm. Um, they spent 20 years in jail. They were eventually were released in 2012 yep. or 2011. Yeah. So that's the case. There's a lot more details to it that I'm going to so get into later. Details. But that is kind of that's the case. And then this movie. There was a book written about it called Devil's Knot. Um, that the book was actually written, you know, this, that book came out, I can't remember what year they, you know, they were obviously still in prison, Mm -hmm. um, when it came out and whatnot, but the book is amazing, very detailed, really gets into all the stuff. Um, I think I want to say the book came out in like 2002, 2003, maybe, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm the whole case was really made famous by the HBO documentaries Paradise Loss. Yep. Um, wh- and there were three of them: one in '96, one in 2000, and one in 2012. Th- those documentaries did very well for making this case worldwide news. Like, yeah, 
without those case without those documentaries, you know, this case would not have gotten the attention it needed and the West Memphis three would still be in prison to this day. Damien Eccles would probably be fucking dead by lethal injection. Yeah. Now that being said, those documentaries are biased as hell. Um, they leave out very important details. They get, you know, they, there's a lot of detail in them, but they do leave a lot of stuff out. They're very biased. Um, the second one pretty much blames, um, Mark Byers, the adoptive father of one of the murdered kids, played by what's his name, Kevin, uh, the dude from Lost and Smoking Aces in this movie. Yes, I, I, yeah, the tr- one of the Tremor brothers. I kept yeah. trying to think of what I recognized him from. Yeah, he was one of the Tremor brothers. Um, so that guy in real life, like the second Paradise Lost documentary, all but comes out and says he did it. Um, completely ruined that dude's life. Um, you know, he didn't. He had a troubled past, like a lot of crime. He wasn't a great person, but mm-hmm. he didn't fucking kill these kids. And so that second documentary just straight up, straight, almost straight up comes and says like, oh, this guy did it. Mm-hmm. Um, so as you know, thank, I'm thankful for those documentaries for bringing this case the attention it needed, but they're not great. If you want a good, pretty unbiased documentary, check out the documentary West of Memphis produced by Peter Jackson. Mm -hmm. of lord of the rings fame that documentary it is like if you want to know everything there is to know about this case watch west of memphis and read the book devil's knot don't rely on this movie (laughs) can i ask you a real this movie will get you started in your research but it's not going to tell you the facts of the case that you need to know can i ask you a real simple question yes uh why is this movie called devil's knot um because the the police officer makes mention that the creek they find him in is Devil's Den. Yeah, I uh, I'll I'm trying to remember what is it. Um, I mean, if you don't if you don't remember, that's fine. I was just curious. Um, but that yeah, I kept waiting for s- some explanation on that, and it never came. Yeah, they don't <clears throat> really get into that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. Um. um Sorry. <laughs> you know what? I'm tr- I'm trying to think. I'm trying to remember where the title came from. I know because oh god. Well, if you if you know. remember Keep it talking, during the episode, I'll, just I'll remember it. Yeah. Eventually, let's let's talk about something real quick before we get into too much of the movie or the case itself. Um, well, I guess one of the reasons this case is so, uh, so popular, you know, in the true crime world, not only just because of circumstances surrounding the deaths but the you know we we dealt with this whole uh heavy music is to blame for everything terrible right you remember those yeah, days metallica um, man metallica judas priest fucking every heavy music band ever um and now it's over the past couple of years the blame shifted to video games which is really odd i don't know um i had to deal with the whole why do you wear black why do you listen to that music shit for so long um but no one well i guess no one's not really good i got a funny story actually to tell you so when i was in devil's not as it's just like pretty much kind of a term regarding the whole clusterfuck of the whole case apparently all right fair enough um that makes sense when i was in high school i was very much into uh like metallica megadeth all those i still am but yeah, yeah. very i mean who the fuck isn't yeah very much awesome. into him had the long hair always wore black all that good shit um and i was i didn't really fit into a click necessarily i was able to bounce around between the you know the nerds the jocks everybody and uh i do remember that a friend of mine once told me that her friend who was much more of a conservative kind of preppy girl um was terrified of me but i never gave off that vibe i don't oh, dude, think totally um i was telling someone um because when we were watching devil's knot um i was literally again ranting about the fucking case and like i like i remember in middle school like you know like i was fucking you know i fucking dressed in black i don't like long hair all that bullshit i think i painted my fucking fingernails black once um and then, like my buddy fucking spiky hair fucking had a trench coat and shit 
Like, we mm-hmm. listen to, like, fucking Slipknot and fucking all those fucking bands. Mm-hmm. We literally, like, got the fucking cops called on us once for walking into a hardware store. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were just walking in there. I'm pretty sure we were going to buy some duct tape. Because mm-hmm. like some rope, some uh, shovels. No, no, like he, like <laughs> I'm trying to remember. It was like his skateboard, like something like the truck was loose, so he was just gonna like duct tape it together real quick. Mm-hmm. Like we went in there, bought some duct tape. We're very nice. Like oh, like hey, how you doing? Like oh, here you go. Keep the change. Blah blah. And then like literally like ten minutes later, we're walking a f- like we're a few blocks away, and the cops show up. They're like, uh, were you just at the hardware store? We had a call about some suspicious individuals. And we're just like, what? I would just been like, no, like, not, are my, you not fucking me. Fucking shitting me? Well, they were like, <laughs> you know, they were described, you know, dressed in all black, one was wearing a trench coat. I was like, I mean, yeah, I guess. Like, we were in there. Like, we bought some fucking duct tape, dude. Like, <laughs> duct tape's I'm illegal now. Sorry. Well, I never had the trench coat, but I, what I was going to say is that that friend of a friend um, confided in her, uh, the one that was afraid of me confided into the friend of mine that anytime there was like um, like a, a rumors of like a, a bomb threat or something that she always assumed it was me, <laughs> which I don't know why I never gave off that vibe at all. But I did uh, eventually tell her, I was like, look, if. I were to ever do anything like that, it would not be a bomb because bombs are stupid. I said I would just take a knife and just in the halls, you know, during class changes and like fucking Hannibal Lecter at the end of Silence of the Lambs and just fade into the crowd. <laughs> so you went, okay, dude, that's funny you say that because that's, <laughs> dude, that kind of, sh- like what you just said, mm-hmm. that's the kind of shit Damien Eccles would say to people. Like, <laughs> dude, like. Maybe I, the, I am uh, giving off that vibe. <laughs> no, dude, like the whole reason Damien Eccles was suspected of this crime was because he was just like, he was like me, or, he was just like me or you, just a, like, he was a kid who grew up in a fucking small hick fucking town mm-hmm. that, you know, didn't belong in that fucking town. Like he knew, like, he's like, oh, I'm not like these other people. Well, he's like, like, dude, okay. And this is like verbatim, like. Damon Eccles admitted this. He's like, they're like, why do you wear all black? I think actually they, they're, it's in the movie. Like, why do you wear all black? He's like, a girl told me I look good in black. Yeah. Like, Plus, dude, black's was, versatile. Like, yeah. Like, you can wear it with anything. Fuck, I'm wearing all black right now. Like, I actually underwear, just looked socks, down. I am shirts, <laughs> pants. Like, I'm sorry. Black <laughs> is my germ. They invented yeah. darker color. I'll start wearing that. Like, dude, he was just like a fucking weird kid. Like, we were like, like, I know, like, you obviously did this shit. I know I did it. Like, if someone, if one of those fucking hit kids came up to me, like, oh, like, you fucking weirdo, like, I'm gonna fuck with them a little bit. Like, yeah, they're like, oh, you probably fucking suck blood. I'm like, yeah, I fucking do. Like, that's the kind of shit, like, yeah. fucking Damien Eccles would did. Like, he, like, and yeah, like, he said, like, he was a bit of a, like, the first time the cops interviewed him, he was kind of a smart ass. Yeah. Like, and again, he was just saying common sense, like, like why do you think the killer did this? Uh, he probably enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, like no, like that's just common fucking sense. But because of one guy, they the law enforcement focused on Damien Eccles solely because of the recommendation of fucking Jerry Driver, who is an absolute piece of shit. He's played by Elias Kotias in this movie. He doesn't have a large part, but he was a major part of why those three ended up in fucking prison. Yeah. For twenty fucking years, um, I guess too. If if you are a younger listener, uh, tuning into the show, and you feel like you're a part of that crowd too, people that like heavy music and wearing black, and you're just tired of the fucking questions. Next time someone asks you why you like wearing all that black shit, just say, "Yeah, it's so much fun, Chan," and then just walk away. That's true. Yeah. Honestly, keep that, you know, have that sound clip on deck. You can yeah. rip it straight out of this episode. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, dude, and like, dude, like, especially like, I barely remember this. So like, I know a lot of our listeners are probably a lot younger than I am. Um, like, dude, like the early to mid nineties, the satanic panic that was happening at that time in the fucking U S like there were 60 minute fucking like episodes about how they are. There's cult activity in the dude, woods the 80s outside your with town. D&D. Like, yeah, dude, like the like and it just carried right over to the 90s like the fucking like the FBI had like cases 
or like files on like possible like satanic cults and like even the FBI like um actually um so I don't know if any of our listeners or you Dustin watched the show Mindhunter I have not um very good highly recommend um so the guy who wrote that book like pretty much the guy that started the behavioral sciences unit mm-hmm. at the FBI he actually was brought in like later on like in like the early 2000s to consult on this case Mm -hmm. and like within like minutes of looking at like through like um the photos and all this shit he's like this isn't a fucking satanic call like this is just like this is like someone who knew the kids obviously he knew one of the kids really well because he focused more on that one kid Mm -hmm. like this is not fucking satanic related and he even admitted, he's like, dude, most of that shit in the 90s, like the FBI's files on satanic cults, that was all bullshit. We all knew that wasn't a fucking thing. I mean, has there ever really been any evidence? Uh, maybe there's a case I'm not familiar with where there was something to that avail that could be accredited back to, you know, the culprit saying, yeah, this was 100%. Uh, Sorry, one other thing that bugs me real quick that is kind there's, of side. There's path. more fucking murder. There's been more murders <clears throat> that the justification is that God told me to do it yeah. than there have been for fucking Satan told me to do it. Like the whole fucking satanic panic thing was just some massive fucking bullshit. That leads me down another little quick path. Um, the whole thing about you know this person's a Satanist, blah blah blah, whatever. Uh, has anyone ever bothered that has made those statements to? ever look into what satanism actually is because nine times out of ten they're not referring to satanism no, uh, they're referring dude. to like wiccans <laughs> but like satanism if like i don't want to get too deep into it because it's no one cares but just know that when you're saying oh this is blah 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 is satanic you're probably in the wrong um but anyways that's it's neither here nor there but that is a fu- fucking if annoying you're, if you're saying satanic and you actually mean wiccan you're probably still fucking wrong because even fucking the term wiccan is used incorrectly half yeah. the fucking time there's but i anyway. don't think there really is any not that i'm aware of any kind of quote-unquote religion where they truly believe in a full satan that they are in his fucking leader like that he's the leader and that they're fucking sacrificing people to i don't think that's even really a thing <laughs> um anyway back to the movie yeah i was Um, gonna say let's get into the movie (laughs) dude so like another big issue which again why this would be such a hard like there is a really good movie in this story but the reason why it's so hard is that like there's there's so many deep like dude they gloss over like from the moment the the bodies are found to when they arrest Mm -hmm. the three they gloss over so much shit they kind of circle back around to it towards the end, but not yeah. nearly well enough. It's like, dude, they circle back. Like the third act of this movie is just like them circling back to fucking like before the three were arrested. It's really the the structure of this movie is really fucking weird. I kept waiting for them to, to go back to mentioning the the bloody black gentleman that entered the women's bathroom. <laughs> and that was like the last two minutes of the movie. <laughs> Dude, and, like, it's crazy to me, like, again, you've seen the movie, you know, that was never followed up on. Yeah. Like, the and one of, like, literally, one of the hairs that has never been identified was, um, like, what's the term I'm looking for? Compatible yeah. with, an, with a black male. <coughs> that hair has never been identified. And they just never fucking connected those two things. It's bonkers to me. Yeah. Uh, it, like, it's... That's one thing that I would say um, about this movie and about most... Uh, if I've learned anything from true crime movies and TV shows, it's that uh, police work related to violent crimes is fucking awful. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. And, like, the... Like, the West Memphis police butchered this fucking case. Like just absolutely fumbled the living fuck out of it and and it goes all the way to the top like the judge that proceeded over this case Mm -hmm. was an absolute piece of shit too like there's three people that really 
can take the blame for why these three people ended up in jail for 20 years. And that yeah. is Jerry driver who set them on, who is a fucking pr- junior juvenile probation officer mm-hmm. and so-called occult expert, mm-hmm. which is, he's not, it's massive fucking bullshit. He just fucking most of the shit he says and has said on mm-hmm. record is just complete made up bullshit. None of it's fucking profanity. true. Like, it's just, he is, like, the living embodiment of the satanic panic of the 90s. Mm-hmm. Absolute piece of shit. Jerry mm-hmm. Driver, Gary Gitchell, who in this film... Um, is he the police portray- chief? Yeah. Um, you I know, don't know the actor, but I do know he's uh, in Better Call Saul and also yeah. plays kind of a dickhead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good actor. I mean, his performance Yo, in, no, he's great. in this movie isn't bad. Like, he's actually one of the better yeah. performances in this movie, to be honest. He's great in Better um, Call Saul, too. He, uh, yeah, he's one of those guys that he looks so familiar, but I can never place him. He's popped up in a ton of stuff. No. Yeah. But he, he's like one of those character actors. Um, yeah, Gary Gitchell, who was the police chief proceeding over this whole case. And then, um, the judge, I can't remember his name Bruce off Greenwood? the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, played, played by Bruce Greenwood. Which, who is required by law, by the way, to play a lawyer or a president or a judge in everything he's ever in? Just so uh, you know. <laughs> Not even. I'd, I'd just say a position of power. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dude, honestly, like, and again, I'm getting kind of back into the real life facts. If he had honestly just been a better judge, they would have not spent nearly 20 years in jail. Like, dude, in like the early 2000s, they like the defense brought up new DNA evidence showing that the hairs found at the crime scene did not match any of the three guys that were in prison. Yeah. And he straight up was like, no, like this isn't that's just not true. Like can't be true. We got our three. Like, why would I look at new evidence? Like these, these three in jail, why do I need to see new evidence? Yeah. It's not going to tell me anything different. They're like, no, 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 look, it literally says it could not have been those three. He's like, no, yeah, it's the no problem way. with small town living. Like it's very easy for those, the, yeah. the politicians and the, the people in positions of power to just gloss over shit. They don't care. Like if he hadn't, like he, he didn't he he stepped down from being a judge to pursue a different role um mm-hmm. i can't remember what it was um not a senate seat or something like it was some other role where um it he, once he took on that role he couldn't preside over cases anymore like if he hadn't done that like damien eccles would be fucking dead right now mm-hmm. but anyway back to the movie um, yeah, this dude. They portray the the portrayal of Damien Eccles in this movie is pretty bad. Like they make him out to be a lot more evil than he actually was. Because again, he wasn't like a fucking Satan worshiper. He was just a fucking fucking little fucking goth kid in a hick town like just a teenage goth in a hick town yeah. like you were like i was yeah they make like the way they portray him in this movie like just i don't know every sh- they make him look evil and menacing in every shot well he's got that um that early 2000s like um who's the guy from typo negative um Fuck, I can't remember his name. But that, like, I mean, uh, Elias, what's his name, mentions it too, like the stringy black hair. They've got it perfectly layered, like, where it flows just right in every shot he's in, so it, like, covers up a little bit of his face. But, like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's so cliche. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, though, they do make this kid seem like he's, like, just, I don't know, like like, like we're watching Elephant again. Um, Right? Yeah. Um. I want to talk about something that I've had to deal with for the past couple of years that maybe it just means I'm abnormal, but there's this thing, I guess, that happens when you become a parent, or at least it's the perception anyway, that once you become a parent, it's difficult for people to watch kids being hurt or die in TV shows and movies, and I've never had that problem um, but like, Jesus. for example, um, have you seen Lars von Trier's Antichrist? 
Yeah. So the opening of that movie, uh, I watched it once with Priscilla, and she pretty much swore off the movie. She's like, I'm not going to watch this. I can't. A kid died. And I'm like, yeah, but it's a movie. <laughs> it's, it's not real. And also, it's done in a way that's not gory or, like, grotesque, especially in that movie. It's, you know, it's kind of an opera. But in, in this movie, it is, you know, upsetting, obviously, to watch little kids' bodies being pulled out of a river. But I don't know. I've never had that problem. Maybe I am giving off the vibe that that girl was afraid of. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I don't Dude, know. I oh. just feel like it's such a pretentious statement to be like, I, can, I can't. Once you become a parent, you you don't understand. Like, no. It's, shut up. It's a movie. <laughs> it's not real. Um. Well, in this case, it kind of was. Yeah. Um. Dude, that, that's something else that's kind of fucked up about this whole story is that Damien Eccles' girlfriend was pregnant mm-hmm. when he was arrested. And, like, dude, like, uh, it – so his son was born preceding the trial. And, like, the first time he got to hold his son was literally outside of the courthouse. Damn. And it kind of probably wasn't a great idea because literally, like – this dude is getting to like hold his son for the first time. And all that's happening is the crowd outside is yelling, get that child away from that fucking baby killer. Yeah. Like that's so fucked up. So fucked up. Did they receive any kind of cash settlement from the, from the state for this? Because I know Um, there's a lot of time overturned DNA. When, when, when when we get to the end, Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna go into oh, okay. the op- uh, I'm gonna the the way they got out of prison is a little weird. Yeah, um, I did a very su- very brief reading on super it. super rare. Yeah, um, yeah. Can I talk um, about they, one other thing? When it glossed, comes- that's one of the details they kind of didn't talk about in the movie was that you know he was a father. Yeah, he was a father. Um, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say it to piggyback on the whole dead kids thing um watching this movie made me realize that i think since 2017 uh tony collette has made it impossible to show a grieving parent like she's set an impossible standard with hereditary to show a parent grieving oh (laughs) my god reese witherspoon is really good in this movie and the scene that we saw in the trailer with her pulling her hair out is so fucking good but that's like the only real scene she gets to have a moment. Like everything after that is just her kind of sulking and like outside the courthouse, like when Colin Farr tries to approach her or at the end of the movie where they have their conversation. She doesn't get to really be a grieving mother at all. Well, and see, it's so there's some weird stuff about that. Um, one, I'm really shocked. So when she first arrives, um, after they're and pretty much when they tell her her son's dead and she collapses yeah that's a pretty good scene i guess i feel like they glossed over it too much like that could have that would have been her fucking hereditary scene right there yeah like Isn't, her just fucking going through and that did actually happen like there's i was gonna actual say, yeah. news footage that you can see of pamela hobbs collapsing in the street when she finds out yeah. it's horrible to watch yeah, Priscilla um, told me, because she's familiar with this case, that, that when we were watching the movie, she goes, yeah, that's exactly how it happened. Oh, my God. Priscilla sort of jumped in on this episode. Should, it would have been I two hours long of just me and Priscilla <laughs> ranting about this case. It would have been fucking great, because Priscilla <laughs> likes true crime. Loves it. Um, fucking love me, it. Honestly, I'm going to talk to Priscilla. Me and Priscilla are going to start a true crime podcast. Do it. Get, it's going to be fucking great. Going. <laughs> oh, my God. No, we're going to start a fucking true crime Do your podcast. Own podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right. The Silver Crimes podcast. That doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Um, but yeah, like it was, I was like, kind of, I was kind of rampant because I hadn't seen this movie. Like, again, like I watched it once, like a year or so ago, and mm. kind of just remember it being bad. I didn't remember the details of it. So, like, when that, I knew that scene was coming up when they were going to tell Reese Witherspoon's character that they found her kid. And I was like, oh, yeah, like she probably gets like a big moment right here. No, it's shot. It's like two seconds long. Shot yeah. in a wide shot. It's, it's like, cause oh, they okay. make Colin Firth the protagonist. Uh, it's yeah, not Reese Witherspoon's movie. That is the biggest critique of this movie. They should that like he's he should not have been the protagonist. He's such an unimportant opinion. person in the movie. Like he has a few things that he contributes, but for the most part, it's yeah, it's real stupid that they made yeah. him the lead character. Um, really weird. 
Um, I have three little things left, if you don't mind. I squeeze them in real quick, and then I, yeah. I'll let you just unravel. Oh, sorry. Going back to Pamela Hobbs real quick. Yeah, sure. Um, Another thing about her is that she did... She was... She did kind of act a little weird. Like... There were, like, that scene where she's on TV and she's kind of a little bubbly. Oh, uh, with the Boy Scout thing? That's real. Like, yeah. if you watch that interview with her, like, you own, besides the fact that she's talking about her dead son, it almost is like, you would never know her son died. Like, she's so bubbly, like, yeah, you know, sometimes I wear it as a headband. <laughs> well, <laughs> to, you, we it's mentioned like, earlier, but I feel the same way watching Tiger King with Carol Baskin. <laughs> well, she's laughing at every single thing and, like, deflecting when people are like, hey, did you murder your husband? And she can't help yeah, stop but giggling. I mean, like I, that, yeah. You can't really fault someone for their personality. Oh and maybe God. it is a nervous tick. Uh, but fan she, cast. I, I know, I think they already announced... What's her name was playing Carol Baskins in some kind of thing. Um, um the girl from SNL. Um, yeah. Um, fuck. what's her? I can't remember her name. Uh, but dude, uh, Reese Witherspoon is Carol Baskins. I'd watch that. Yeah, I'd Maybe. watch that. I, I saw know, someone but... fan cast Brad Pitt as Joe Exotic. It's got to be David <laughs> Spade, and I won't accept anything less. Dak Shepard can <sighs> fuck right off. It's got. I mean, he's already done Joe Dirt. He can fucking do it. He See, can fucking I don't, do it, uh... and he deserves a comeback. <laughs> Because yeah, Joker 2 was god awful. <laughs> see, I'm just going to be seeing Joe Dirt the whole time. Though. I'm fine with it. It could be a spiritual successor to Joe Dirt. Are you Dirt? telling me care. you don't want to see Brad Pitt win an Oscar for best How's actor he gonna do for the playing voice? Joe Exotic? If he does the voice, maybe, but he could. Oh, dude. He, no, he could do it. I don't know. I mean, he it would, could do it. He dude, could maybe amazing. do it for an SNL skit. I don't know if he can hold a full movie. Also, like that. I'm fan casting Tom Hanks as Carol Baskins. Uh, <laughs> the, either the, of her, the new either husband? of the husbands, yeah. either of them, honestly, because <laughs> I don't know why that would just be fucking hilarious. <sighs> I don't know, man. Uh, but yeah, t- the whole nervous ticks thing and like not a quote unquote re- like behaving how one w- is expected to is is a weird thing because I do like. In this movie, I'm like, you know, I don't fault her for how she's acting, but then I go and, like I said, watch something like Tiger King, and I'm like, Carol Baskin's clearly guilty because look how she's fucking <laughs> reacting during all this whole thing. But, mm. I mean, there's no real right way to do that, I guess. I mean, I guess there are probably experts, too, who are more uh, experienced in detecting body language and things like that to really be able to nail it down, but... Yeah, I just, like I said, I just, she doesn't get a real good scene except for that hair pulling scene, which is really great. And I wanted more from her, but after that, she's pretty much put in the back seat of this movie. She doesn't get to do anything. Um, yeah, which is really unfortunate because, again, she's good. Yeah, in she's really the good. The little scenes she gets, she's good. Um, the other few little things I want to talk about is that one kid is a dead ringer for a young John Barenthal. The one, uh, the kid that plays Jesse Miss Kelly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's all I could see. And then when he first started talking, I was like, "Oh, never mind." <laughs> but definitely <laughs> resembles him a lot. Um, um, I mean, as far as like visual casting, um, this movie did pretty good. Like the three that play the West Memphis Three, like they look pretty accurate to their characters. Um, the guy, like Bruce Greenwood, kind of looks like the judge. The guy um, that plays. Gitchell looks pretty good. Pamela uh, Reese Witherspoon does a pretty good job looking like Pamela Hobbs. Um, the woman that plays Vicky Hutcherson, um, who she's is she's the, the one that tries to seduce him. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's way too pretty of an actress for yeah. that woman. Um, <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> I don't know if anyone wants to take a look at what Vicky Hutcherson looks like, but oh my god, if meth took human form. Oh holy shit. <laughs> oh, like, dude, it... Oh. The, the moment she pops up the movie, it's like, oh, she's way too pretty for this. Wow. Um, again, that's another actress where it's like, oh, her. Yeah. Um, same with... <laughs> same with Colin Firth's assistant. <laughs> she pops up, I'm like, oh, her. I can't remember any of their names. Yeah. But it's like, this movie's filled with, like, oh, that guy. Yeah. Like, one of the prosecu- prosecutors is fucking Stephen Moyer of True Blood fame. Yeah, Priscilla recognized him, too. Sucky. Um, Again, a- good, good cast in this movie, but yeah. they got... Ooh, God Nothing damn, to do. Dropped it. Um, 
I didn't know that cremation was considered evil for Christians. That, me neither. That, that list that he to me. spits out, and he ends with ends it with and cremation. I was like, wait, that's wrong. I didn't know that was a thing. Is that new? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, apparently um, it's been around since the nineties. Yeah. Um, and the, the, I thought you know cremation's kind of cool. Yeah. Whatever. I guess. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention is. This movie had a very familiar structure to me, and then I looked up afterwards who the writer was, and as we mentioned, Scott Derrickson is one of the writers who wrote Doctor Strange, is one of the most recent things he you might know him from. But he also wrote a little movie called The Exorcism of Emily Rose, which has yep. a similar structure in terms of the courtroom proceedings and stuff. Emily Rose is more like all over the place in terms of the timeline, but it did feel very familiar to me, mm-hmm. and it which- I. I think I even remember saying at the beginning of the movie, I was like, this feels like an exorcism of Emily Rose type thing. And sure enough. Well, it's, I remember, dude, I, uh, sidebar on that movie. I remember going into that movie mm-hmm. no, and, and just like about 30 minutes in being like, this is a courtroom drama. Yeah. Kind of. I thought this was, a, I thought this was a <laughs> scary movie. Nope. It's a fucking, it's a courtroom drama horror film. I, l- I remember so liking weird. it, but I've only seen it's it once. Not- yeah, I probably haven't seen it since theaters, but I remember yeah. being like, this is kind of good, I think. Possible but upcoming being episode? very confused yeah. that it was a courtroom drama. What was it, like 2008 or something like that? I think I was in high mm-hmm. school when I saw it. And I, that was the only time I saw it, but yeah, I remember liking it. And like I, I mean, said, it might I be... Love me a, I love me a good courtroom drama. Yeah, it might be an upcoming episode. I don't remember how it ends, but... <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to do some research. Get yeah. Back to you on that one. Um, that's, that's all I really had. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we get to the ending? Any other... Um, no, we'll just jump into the ending. So, in regards to the film, the film just kind of ends. Mm-hmm. Like, so they go through the trial which jesse mckelly was tried separately from the other two and jesse miss kelly was sentenced to life in prison um for one of the murders and then yeah. 40 years for each of the other two um uh, jason baldwin was sentenced to life in prison for on three counts of capital murder yeah. Damien Eccles was sentenced to death by lethal injection on three counts of capital murder. Hey. Because he was the ringleader. Real quick. Don't yeah. they try Jesse separately from the other two? Yeah, I said that. They get, I was going to say, they get him kind of in and out of the movie real quick. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah you're going to jail forever. Um, Bye. <laughs> yeah, the... God, dude, I could go for another hour just on Jesse Miss Kelly alone. Like, dude, like that. Seemed like a nice that, guy. Dude, he he's such a sad character in the real life events of this story. Like he, dude, he probably had the IQ of like a fifth grader. I was gonna say they mentioned um, that he's uh, challenged in the movie. Like, dude, when he was arrested and that you know they take pictures of all of, like your body and note tattoos. He had the word tattoo, like a, st- a shitty stick and poke tattoo of the word bitch on his chest. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, you know he didn't give, he didn't choose that. Like, yeah, he he was sitting around, like, and you know, um, someone was probably like, oh, I'm gonna give you a cool tattoo, yeah, and fucked and with him, fucking wrote bitch on it. Like, you know, he didn't fucking choose that. Yeah. Um, that being said, while he was in prison, he did get another tattoo. Oh, really? Uh, I didn't know about that. Yeah. So he he has a shaved head. Um, mm. now well, I don't know if he still does, but at the time. He had a shaved head, and he just got a clock okay. on top of his head with no hands. Okay. And it's really fun because, like, they would add, they're like, oh, like, in interviews, they'd be like, oh, like, you know, what's, what's the, so you got a tattoo on your head there, Jesse, what's that about? And he'd just kind of point out and be like, time. It's got time on the mind. He, he, he was a very, he was a very simple, simple yeah. man. And that's, and dude, that's why, like, I think they note it in the movie, but, like, when they interrogated him, he was interrogated for almost like twelve hours. Yeah, yeah. And there's only like forty minutes of recording of that. They let, like, they straight up, they fed him every detail of the case, and they talk about it in the movie. Like, he originally said it was at noon. They're like, well, no, it couldn't have been at noon because what about school? He's like, well, I don't go to school. He's like, well, the kids were in school. He's like, oh, it must have been around five or six. They're like, oh, are you sure it wasn't seven or eight? And he's like, oh yeah, it was seven or eight. Like, dude, they yeah. let him on. Yeah. on. It's all because they were like. 
if you tell us what we want to know, you can go home. Yep. And God, and dude, like the amount, like he recanted his testimony multiple times. He changed his story multiple times just because he was just trying, like he grew up very simple. He thought the cops were on his side. He didn't ever fucking think like something like this could happen. No. Um, and like when it, and like Jason Baldwin, like that's the whole, like, Jason Baldwin was only a part of this case because Jerry Driver and Gary Gitchell were like, we think Damien Eccles did this. And like, and they kind of leave this out of the movie. The three boys were Mm. hogtied kind of like with their hands and legs tied behind their backs. Yep. The knots on all three, all different, which implies at least Two different people, Th- if not three. Two or three, yeah, yeah. at least multiple killers. Because all the knots were different. And that is the sole reason why Jason Baldwin was involved. Because he because Gary Gitchell and Jerry Driver wanted Damien Eccles to be the one to have done this. Yeah. And they were like, Well, Jason Baldwin's always with him, so that would make sense. Like, dude, the fu- most like one of the most fucked up parts, like Jason Baldwin wasn't nearly as gothy as Damien Eccles, but he just got roped in because he was friends with Damien. Yeah. Like he, he listened to Metallica, um, but like, and he had a probably the most outstanding mullet of all time. Look up pictures of Jason Baldwin, like, dude, they like this movie did not do his mullet justice, <laughs> and that's one of the biggest my biggest issues. That's with this your movie biggest is, criticism. Oh <laughs> my dude, seriously, one of like right up there with Billy or Ray Cyrus in the nineties, like <laughs> that kind of good mullet, all right? Like right up there, neck and neck with Billy Ray, <laughs> but dude, like. All this satanic cult bullshit. Like, dude, like, literally, in an interview with Jason during the trial, he was like, they were like, you know, are you worried about being found guilty? He's like, well, ma'am, like, I don't, you know, I think I'm going to be okay because I know I'm innocent and, you know, I go to church every Sunday and I just don't think God would let something like this happen to me. Like, Man, and then they're sitting, here, they're sitting here saying, like, he's a member of a satanic cult. And she, like, it's so fucked up. Um, it's like the so, same yeah. witch trials, man. Yeah, it, dude, like this, this, this story was, it was a fucking witch hunt. That's all it was. Yeah. Um. So the movie kind of ends like it, like they're all convicted. Pamela Hobbs is kind of having doubts about whether these three actually did it. Yeah, she kind of drops which, a bombshell right at the fucking end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, they kind of, they tacked on a lot of shit that didn't, it, the ending storyline, like timeline isn't quite accurate. Like she didn't find that knife right then and there like it was a while later yeah if memory serves um and she was you know she was still pretty convinced they fucking did it for a while after this happened um pretty it um yeah um yeah like finding um you know her son's knife in her his stepdad's toolbox Mm -hmm. all that stuff um yeah, so like the movie just kind of ends with that little weird scene between her and Colin Firth's character being like, you know, maybe they didn't do it. End of movie. And then <laughs> and then we just get like some title cards explaining other shit. Yep. Um So, yeah, this like this movie really has it, it doesn't resolve itself which is kind of understandable in a way because the case doesn't really resolve yeah. in a manner of speaking it's, but it's weird because it, it gives you like three branches three or four branches and like which it's like a choose your own adventure who do you think did it like there's no they don't provide any conclusion it's kind of lazy that they don't try and at least say here's what we think happened they're just like like how um you know uh contagion and uh, ended last time we talked about it like where here's what happened it, you know it's obviously a fictional movie this they could have done that like here's what we think would have happened in this scenario here's what would have happened with the stepdad here's what would have happened with the the bloody man in the bathroom etc so did like, you did you kind of want a clue-esque ending where you just get multiple may, endings not most multiple Honestly, endings but i t- i would take that not necessarily multiple endings but like maybe like here's you know, like even in the title cards, here's what, you know, experts think, you know, could have happened if this were the scenario. Like, I don't know. It's just something. But all they all they do is like, yeah, so-and-so is in jail. 
uh they might they you know they got released whatever and that that's it <laughs> i don't um, know um so i'm going to get into i'm going to get into why i think this movie qualifies Okay. For our podcast, because I was a little concerned that you were going to watch it and be like, dude, like, I don't know if this counts. No, I think it counts because, I mean, it's because, a real case, and yeah, the guy still spent two decades in jail yeah, for crimes they may or may not the have West Memphis, The West Memphis, they do get out of prison in yeah. 2000, like, late 2011. But that's not for the, the movie. Right. The movie the is, reason, yeah. Yeah, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because it is mentioned in the movie in the title card at the end. In order to get out of prison, they entered what's called an Alfred plea. Yeah. And that pretty much says, like, to put it, it's very complicated, but to put it in its simplest terms, the three of them admitted, they retain, they stated, I am innocent of these crimes, but I admit that pretty much there is enough evidence yeah. to convict me of this crime. Yeah. And well, it's kind of like the the difference between being innocent in a court of law and being not guilty, you know, or like, right, you know, not well, guilty see, means there's not enough evidence to convict you, but the likely, you know, the the opinion sways to they people think you did it, whereas innocence, like, no, you absolutely could not have done this thing, right? You know? And see, that's another big thing about this case. These, you know, innocent until proven guilty is supposed to be a thing in our country. Yeah. These three were never given that. Like, every single thing about this case leaked to the press. So before these three were even, their trial even started, the public, the media, everyone was convinced these are the guys that did it. Like, they were never given their fair shot at, they weren't given a fair trial. I'm just going to fucking yeah. say it. That, they, well, they were not given a fair trial. It It's... It does over I, the reason I think it qualifies for an episode is because it also also kind of overlays with what we are dealing with today with like cancel culture and everything, like the oh, hive 100%. mind hive mind mentality is so fucking crazy. I mean, there are obviously you know times where it's warranted, like Kevin Spacey or whatever. But then you know it's very rare, but there are the circumstances where like someone's accused of sexual assault or rape, and it turns out. You know, that they're innocent, but once people have made up their mind, even when the facts are laid out, it's, it's hard for people to change their perception. And now it only takes like 30 seconds for someone to be, I mean, Roseanne came out with that racist tweet of hers and she was gone by the end of the day. Like, right? it's, it's, it's unfortunate that it's got to this point, but you know, with the Me Too movement, you've had some amazing things happen, like this piece of shit who produced this movie being put away forever. Um, mm-hmm. But it's as soon as, you know, the the claws are out, that's it. No matter what's, you know, if you're guilty or not, it's, it is pretty crazy, I mean, but it's also a, a good, good thing. A good example of that, look, look at Aziz Ansari, what happened with him. Yeah. And he's, he, he'll he be back. I mean, he's already kind of coming oh, dude, back he, anyway. Oh, dude, he bounced back. That uh, His last comedy special was, was great. Real, it was great. It was really and, good. And, dude, he, he should have addressed that whole situation right off the bat. And you know and, what? you know, mad, mad respect for that dude. What's crazy is he did it the right way, and then you look at Louis C.K., who is going, and he's, he's like full head sprint in the wrong direction. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, oof. Whew. Yeah. Um, but so back to this. Um another like the single most fucked up part of this movie. Um and they don't like that's my one gripe about this movie. They don't quite dig this fact in enough. As far as the state of Arkansas is concerned, this case is officially closed. Yeah. They are like the state of Arkansas, you know, they got they got their guys as far as they're concerned. Yes, those guys are out of prison now. Mm-hmm. Thank God they're out of fucking prison. Um, but the state of Arkansas is not pursuing any more of the stuff. Like there there are still people pursuing these leads, you know, the trying to find out more about Bojangles, trying to, you know, um the movie kind of hints at it a lot, but you know, Fucking Terry Hobbs, there's some strong evidence against that gentleman. Um, All right, so who do you think did it? 
Give me a fucking answer. Ah, dude. I can't say this with complete certainty, but I'm going to be honest. At least right now, um, again, I'm rereading, I'm rereading Devil's Knot. <laughs> um, I've been rewatching some documentaries, doing some more research. Um, <laughs> right now, I'm kind of leaning towards Mr. Hobbs. Um, he, there, there is, there's a lot of shit. Um, <laughs> I can't any I'm I'm just going to I'm going to throw this out there right now. Um I don't really want to call it a pick me up movie alternative, but please 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 anyone if you watch this movie, please watch the documentary West of Memphis if you want to know more about this case. It's mind-boggling some of the shit that's in that documentary that just the police just fucking ignored. Like Okay. I don't like I if I literally like again I rewatched this documentary with a friend of mine because I wanted like we she was watching it with me and I was like look like I'm gonna give you a choice do you want to watch the movie first and then the documentary or do you want to watch the documentary then oh the god movie? you force like, someone to have a double feature <laughs> well because she like she was very unfamiliar with the case okay and she's like and she's a she wanted to so I was like she's like oh I want to watch the documentary first and like she can attest to it i literally was like pacing around the room just like fuming because dude i i get so fucking incensed about this fucking case like just the injustice that was fucking carried out and this like same with this movie like as bad as this movie is like again it probably helped bring this case a little more light even though you know it, they were already out of fucking prison when it when it happened like when this movie came out but still the more people that know about this case the more people that know about false confessions and being wrongfully convicted and you know equal justice all that stuff like the more people that are aware of that kind of thing the fucking better sorry to get very political and get up i'm gonna get down off my fucking soapbox now <laughs> but okay. yeah um no, well, Ooh. well said. Um, I am out of breath. Let let me talk for a oh, minute. Oh man, then. I don't usually talk this much during this. Podcast. I like it. I you should more. <laughs> do oh, do <laughs> more. <laughs> Take more true, notes. More true. Wouldn't have we covered Zodiac on this show? <laughs> we might as well at this point. Um, oh god, I'm just gonna go on a fucking Fincher <laughs> deep dive on that one. Whew. Well, let's get into something a little different. Uh, Get away from all the technicalities. Let's talk about Prop Cop. That is, the, of course... Oh, Dustin, I'm really nervous about what you're going <laughs> to want from this movie, because... The Prop Cop, oh. for those who are unaware, is where we talk about what prop from the movie I or Mally would most like to own. Um, oh, no. I'm so nervous <laughs> about what you're going to pick. I mean, there's not much to pick from in this movie. There's not a whole lot of props... Um, I would just say it's got to be the knife, right? Like the the pocket knife. Wait, the oh, not the pocket knife. Sorry, the the black handled one that the the police show Jesse, um, where they mentioned the blood, uh, could have been wiped off the hand. Oh no, it's not Jesse. It's when he's talking to Colin Firth. You know, what I'm talking about the black. Oh, wait, the knife they claim was used. Yes. Oh, you mean the knife that they only found because oh the prosecutor knew where to find it they found that in a lake behind jason baldwin's house now keep in mind this lake pretty good fucking size the divers were in the water for less than 30 minutes before they found it hmm. the diver is on record saying he was given a description of the knife and roughly the area where it would probably be the prosecution knew where to look for that knife. And it just so happens the reporters were called before the knife was found. Hmm. The reporters were told, hey, come out here. We're about to make a discovery. Hmm. And then they found that knife and claimed it was the murder weapon. Now, how did the prosecution know that knife was in the river or in that lake? Because Jason Baldwin's mother told them it was there because she had thrown it in the lake a year before the murders ever happened. Yeah. Wow. 
Watch West of Memphis, guys. Read <laughs> Devil's Knot. Oh, anyway, yeah. glowing recommendation. Um, Should we get into yeah, some no, And plus, that is a pretty cool knife. Also, there are multiple people, experts on record, saying the wounds caused by the so so called caused by the knife were not could not have been caused by a knife. They are actually more consistent with wounds um, from bites from a snapping turtle, which were very prevalent in those woods. Damn. Anyway. Should um, we get to silver linings? <laughs> well, I didn't say what I wanted. Oh, I didn't know you wanted anything. What do you want? Yeah. What, dude, what, I don't, what prompt honestly, do you want? Honestly, like, I kind of want Damien's, like, notebook. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Like, there's some there's a fucking pentagram on the outside. That shit's cool. <laughs> okay. Although, I don't know. Jason Baldwin has a really sick Metallica shirt on at one point. Yeah. And that would be kind of rad. All right. Well... We've done all of that talking. Now it's time to do our actual job, which is, of course, the silver lining of Devil's Knot. So what you got? Oh, I have to go first? I mean, I can go first if you want. Go first. Um, I like it more when you go first because I feel like we always choose the same one. Well, in a way, uh, Ron Lax, Colin First character, succeeded in what he was trying to do. Sort of. I mean, the guy's, you know were released yeah they didn't do it um i mean yeah dude like i'm i i have to go with the same one um there's not a lot of silver lining to this movie or this story um well if you want that one i have a second one oh you do what is it um he that damien eccles eventually got to be a, a daddy yeah properly um you know he didn't damien eccles is still fucking alive um yeah that's one of the best had, things. Had and a crazy life since being released too. Yeah, dude. He like all. Th- I mean, all three of them seem to be doing pretty well for the most part. Yeah. Um, you know, Damon Damien got some great celebrity friends out of this. I know the guy from the Misfits. Um, what's his um, name, dude? Johnny Depp. Um, mm-hmm. what's his name? Lead singer of Pearl Jam. Mm-hmm. Like, dude. Like, uh, God, I can't remember his name. Like Johnny Depp and lead singer of Pearl Jam. Like they were actually in sorry i keep talking about west of memphis um he's interviewed a lot like he was there at the prison the day they were released damn like yeah dude like again shout out those hbo documentaries because that's what uh, why a lot of these like really famous people got involved is because of those as biased and kind of bad as they are they got people's attention and got people to notice this case to help those three um, and yeah, I believe I, mean, I three... read that he started a foundation to try to help wrongfully convicted uh, felons. Did I did I read that right? Yeah, um, I think he's involved in that. Yeah. Um, good for him. You know, he's a little more out there than the other two. The other two are kind of live live in quieter lives. Yeah, um, I kind of would too. Probably. I mean, Jason Baldwin was always a quiet kid to begin with. Yeah, you know, he kind of he kept to him fucking self most of the time. Like he hung out with Damien and shit. Um, Dude, like, and that's, dude, like, Damien definitely had the rough, like, of the 20 years he spent on death row, keep in mind, 10 of those were in solitary confinement. Yeah, I read that. Like, he, to this day, Damien Eccles has to wear sunglasses anytime he's outside because his eyes just can't handle sunlight anymore. Yeah. Like, that's so fucked up. <sighs> Poor guy. Yeah. Um... um I highly another thing I highly recommend. He's written a number of books. Um, he wrote a book called Life After Death about his time in prison. Um, can't recommend that enough. It's really good. He has another book called I think it's called Till Death Do Us Part or something like that. It's about pretty much him being married and a dad while in prison. Um, check out his books. Um, Devil's Not the Book, West Memphis the Documentary. Um, I mean, I'm gonna go say I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I'll, I'll recommend this movie, okay. um, just for the sake of for people to know more about this whole fucking thing, this whole fucking fiasco. Okay, because I know some people aren't big documentary peoples. I know some people um, don't like to read, so I'm check one out of those this people. movie. It'll get, see, I <laughs> dude, my you've never been to my apartment. You were in my old apartment in Orlando, but yeah, like there's, I have all my books again and like there are just stacks of books all over my living room. I'm that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a stack of books sitting right next to me right now. Actually, one of them is Devil's Knot, shout out. Um, I fucking love reading. Like I probably read 
I'm Nerd. currently reading three different books. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I would recommend it. I know you probably wouldn't. No, not really. Um, yeah. If you know anything about this case, I feel like the movie is not going to do anything for you. Uh, I'm sure. Oh, no, not at all. I'm sure there's tons of other better movies about this subject, like the documentaries aside. I'm sure there's some hidden gems out there that are doing uh, this movie better. I think the performers in this movie are pretty lackluster, too. Like Reese Witherspoon gets one good scene and nobody else really gets to do much. Um, the movie, the, like as you said, Colin Firth just kind of sleeps yeah. through this whole. It's a very film. sleepy movie. Like it kind of loses its fizzle after the first act, after the boys' body are, uh, bodies are found. Like even it the really trial does. is kind of boring. Um, very. But yeah, the movie never really peaks. So I don't know. I mean, if you know the basics of this case, don't bother. Um, yeah. but let's talk about pick me up movie alternatives, movies that people should watch after they watch Devil's Knot to lift their spirits back up because this is okay. a heavy movie. I'm going to recommend and I'm only it has usually I tie the movie in mm-hmm. with whatever we watch this week. Yep. I'm actually just going to throw this movie out because it is what I watched afterwards. Um me and my friend were talking about movies and she was like, "Oh, have you seen this? It's really funny. It's a romantic comedy, which everyone knows, big fan of those." Mhm. I love true crime and I love romantic comedies. Um, it stars, oh, what's his name? Uh, what's old, old Meg Ryan's son? He was in The Boys. What's his name? Mm. Jack, uh, Jack Quaid. Okay. Um, and Maya uh, Erskine. It's called Plus One. Came out 2019. Uh, great Never romantic comedy. It. It, it's a fun, it, very fun. Highly recommend. Great little romantic comedy. It's about these two friends who decide to be each other's plus ones during wedding season. Um, very fun. Very, yeah, of course. Okay. Um, very, very predictable movie, but very fun. Very witty. The banter. Great. Um, the, the chemistry between the two leads. Fantastic. It is just, it really brought me up after watching this movie for sure. Like I was like damn near tears in my eyes laughing a few points. Okay. Um, mine has two kind of ties to this movie um we've mentioned it already colin first sleepwalks through this fucking movie but i want i think he's a great actor i want to see more of him but i want to see him doing something fun and entertaining so i say watch kingsman the secret service after this movie because it's radically different and my second tie to that is you get to watch colin first kill a bunch of hicks oh yeah dude (laughs) i will say the sequel to that movie not great it's fine um i didn't see the prequel but the that first one is so much fun yeah that church scene alone is worth the price of ticket oh dude that church scene is bonkers all right um anything else wait real real quick on the topic of kingsman Mm because i don't know british people Mm -hmm. did you see that movie the gentleman sorry matthew mcconaughey i am not a guy Ritchie fan I'm sorry. I know you're Fuck probably going to you. be. All yeah. right. Yeah. Never mind. It's uh, a good? great movie. It was so much fun. Okay. I'm also so starting to realize fun. I don't like Matthew McConaughey. Whoa. I I find his. I mean, I like him in whoa. certain roles. I don't whoa. like him as an actor as a whole. Whoa. 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 Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. I said it. Um. So you. So like you aren't. <laughs> like I'm still riding the McConaughey wave. So. I like I said I you like know. him in movies. I don't like him as a whole. I think he's good in like movies like Wolf of Wall Street, where you get little brief glimpses of him. Dude, uh, True Detective season one. True Come Detective on. season one's great, but um, I, like Dallas he just Fires looks. Club, bro? He just looks annoying in The Gentleman. I don't know. He's fucking great. Okay. Well. Yeah. Uh, and also Charlie Hun- 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 Whatever. He's. I was never a big fan of his. I'm not really. a fan of him either. He's fucking awesome in this movie, dude. Him and Hugh, uh, what's his name, Hugh Grant, mm-hmm. share a lot of screen time. And holy shit, those Hugh two Grant together, that thing? dude, it's fucking bonkers. Okay, it is. It's I highly. That's another pick me up movie, honestly, because just because it's so fucking silly and it's amazing. All right, but it is. It's a big guy Richie return to form after shit like King Arthur. Yeah, I didn't see so that. So if 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 you weren't a fan of his, of like classic guy Richie. Um, like Lock Sock, Two Smoking Barrels, uh, Revolver, that kind of sh- uh, snatch. If you're not a fan of those, Gentleman's probably not for you. Okay. I'll but probably skip it then. God damn, if you like Guy Ritchie, if you like those Guy Ritchie movies, you're going to love this one. All right. Uh, anything else? Do we cover Again, all the basics? I could 
go for hours about this case, but that's not what we're here yeah, for. Yeah, let, let me cut you off there. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll, I'll save it for me and Priscilla's True Crime there you Podcast. Go. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. If you haven't already, please, of course, subscribe, rate, leave feedback. We really appreciate that. Follow us on social media. Join us on our subreddit. That's all. I don't want to get into a whole thing um yeah, honestly if you want to talk more about this case message me. message mally <laughs> on twitter or instagram or whatever um all right well I've I'm, a, got... I'm on the, i'm on i'm on the twitter i'm on the gram you can find me i'm not hard to find i'm out there yep Woo. all right well uh i have a clue for next week's episode you ready yes uh my clue is that we still use the rabbit ears on our tv and like I said earlier in the episode, Scott Derrickson has an interesting tie to this movie. Well, not interesting, interesting. but it is a tie to the movie. Um, okay, so I'm that's gonna, it. I'm. I don't. I I know what we're doing next week, and I have no idea what the connection is. So I'll tell you off, Mike. That. No, no, t- save it for next week. Okay. I mean, it's a real simple. <laughs> it's like, like I said, instead of six degrees of separation, it's like one or two. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm riding this wave with the audience. We will definitely forget to talk about that next week, though. Probably, yeah. yeah. So who knows? Oh, well. Um, all right. I got nothing else. Anything else? That's it for me. All right. Well, thank you for listening, everybody. Again, continue to stay indoors if we're still in lockdown when this comes up. Uh, God. Wash your hands. Order your Uber Eats. Um, don't watch this movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's all. That's all. Watch, watch, watch West of Memphis. All right. Well, until next week, when we're talking about rabbit ears on the TV, uh, as always, free the Satan three. made me do it. Oh. Dude, you had a fucking layup there and you missed I, it. Yep. <laughs> Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. Oh.